What's up guys, Josh with Russell Marine Products here. Today we're going over five tips with your Garmin Electronics to get you from the ramp to the hook set a little quicker, a little more efficient. And if you stay tuned, might have be a bonus tip in there for you. All right guys, so like we said in the intro, five tips to get you from the ramp to the hook set a little bit quicker. These tips are to get more efficiency out of your units, to get your electronics doing what you want them to do and to do it in the easiest way possible. We're gonna start off with tip number one and that's gonna be setting your presets. This is your fast action buttons on the side of your unit so you can jump from screen to screen without having to scroll through menus. Um, everybody's gonna be a little bit different here. Personally, I'll run a 2D and map split screen. I'm gonna run a side imaging screen a lot. I'm gonna get into my live scope a lot with these Garmin units. So let's go through how we can set those presets. It's quick and easy, and we'll move on to the next step. So here we are on my home screen, guys. I'm running the 93 UHD here on the old crappie killer. And like I said, let's set up some of these presets to get you quickly on the water. Now, the first one I talked about, we're gonna go into combos. I wanna do the fishing chart and 2D combo. This is something we're gonna use quite a bit. This is one I like. And what I'm gonna do is come over here to this number one. This is right here on your right side. You're gonna push and hold, and it's gonna say shortcut, page save to shortcut key number one. All right, very good. Now, my 2D and my mapping screen, this is gonna use when I'm running out across the water and I'm getting to where I wanna go to start fishing and doing some more precise uh, searching. But this is a, an important one. So let's go back home. Like I said, the next one I do, I like using side imaging. Once I've run across the water, I wanna start investigating where I'm at. So we're gonna come in here. I'm gonna click side view. There's my side imaging pulled up here. I'm gonna go over to the number two button, press, hold, and there it is. Page save to shortcut key number two. All right, let's go one more time here. Let's go get my live scope pulled up. I'm gonna go into pan optics. And right now I've got set up in perspective. So I'm gonna come over here to number three. I'm gonna press, hold, and page save to shortcut number three. Now, back to the home screen. So here we go. I'm gonna just tap my number one. There it is. I'm gonna tap number two. It's gonna kick me right to side imaging. And number three, pulls me right over to live scope. So there it is guys. Now this setting your presets, you can do this at home, you can do it at the ramp, you can even do it right after you drop your boat in, but it's something that as you're moving back and forth to different spots is gonna save you precious seconds and it's gonna keep your line in the more water more often. So let's check out tip number two, let's get our depth shading right. So let's talk about why we're changing our depth shading and why we're setting that up and its importance. So when you have your contours, of course you can use that and you can look at it, but you're looking at a bunch of lines on a map without any real clear definition and it takes more time to concentrate on and find what you're looking for. Now, if you have got fishing reports or you're talking to your buddies and they're like, oh man, they're hammering at me from 10 to 15 feet. When I'm running there, I'm catching them. When I'm out of that, I'm not getting a thing. Well, we can go into our depth shading and we can highlight those, those ranges and those boundaries. You know, anytime you do that, it's gonna make life a lot easier running out on the water as opposed to trying to find your contours, you're gonna just stick to say a red band or a yellow band on your map. And it's gonna be a lot more efficient and keep you where you need to be. Another option is uh, we're in the fall. So if we're looking for flats and we're looking for funnels and we're looking for those kinds of targets, by having your shading turned on, those things are gonna stick out more like a sore thumb instead of having to concentrate on those lines all the time. So let's dive in and take a look at how we set that depth shading. All right, guys, so we're gonna go from our home screen into charts, we're gonna go to our fishing chart, pulls up here, like I said, so you still have your contour lines, but let's go in and get some highlights going here. So we're gonna go menu, layers, water, 
and where it says depth shading in the top now, that green on the outside, that's showing that it's on and active. So we're gonna come over here, swipe over, and here we go. We have presets of zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20. Now you can add further depth ranges. For our purposes and for most purposes here in the Midwest, these depths are gonna cover you pretty darn well. So let's start with our uh, 10 to 15 foot range. I'm gonna turn that guy on. So let's kick shading to on first off, and then we can set our colors just could and it gives you a full color palette you can choose from here to set it up the yellow works fine for me I'm gonna click that so let's go ahead and hit get menu and go back and look at our map with our updates now I'm in a pretty shallow piece here so you're gonna see a very little bit of yellow as it's coming through let's continue to add some and see what we get so again menu layers water depth shading is on pull over now let's go set our zero to five feet now this is going to be a lot of the area i'm in right now up in this particular cove we're going to kick it to on and again we can change our color to anything we want let's give this guy uh, let's give her give her a nice blue all right so we're on we're set to blue hit menu see what this updates with our map so there we go you guys can see those highlighted uh, areas pulling up along my banks so now I've got better definition one more time menu layers water depth shading let's go kick on our 5 to 10 foot range we're gonna go on leave it at orange why not and there we go So here we go guys. So now we've got some contours in. Let's zoom in and take a look and see what this gives us. See all that, look at this clutter with all those contour lines, trying to figure that out. Now we have our nice clear bands. So now you can really see it there at the end as I zoomed in. It really highlights those target depths that you're looking for keeps things fast and efficient when you're running to new areas. A lot of times, if you've got fish hanging out in a certain depth, they're gonna do that at multiple places on a given body of water, not just in a single cove. So when you think you fished your cove out and you're ready to run to the next, ready to run to the next whatever you're looking for, if that depth is where they're hot, that depth is probably gonna be where they're hot at your next spot. So keep those highlights ready and it'll save you time when you get to your next spot. All right, so those are two tips you can set anywhere from, again, the ramp when you're dropping in the water, figuring out where you're at. Let's move on to tip number three, and that's gonna be how we're gonna set waypoints when we get to the areas we're looking for based on our depth using site imaging. All right, guys, so here we go. We're running, making this nice run here. We're running up along this rocky bank. So I can see underwater cover along this run. So I want to set some waypoints to go back and take a closer look at it later. So when you see something that you want to mark with your side imaging, rock pile, brush pile, lay downs, whatever you want to do, the simple thing to do on a Garmin here is going to be a simple swipe down. So up here, I'm going to see, start seeing these, these rocks coming along the edge of this point. And if I see something bigger I want to check out, I can swiftly, simply swipe down, and that's gonna bring my cursor up. Pull it up, once I'm there, hit my waypoint button, and there you go. I've got new waypoint 222. You can go in and edit, you can change the name, make some notes on it. It's gonna tell you the water temperature, depth, everything you need to know to save it for later if you wanna check it out next time. So let's go back, hit the play button, brings us back to live sonar. You're gonna see the line come down. Now this is showing where it's catching up to what you're going over now. This is from when it paused when you set your waypoint. Now, when you're running your side imaging, you can do this and look for things that are obvious. Um, we're gonna have some overhead shots where you see these brush piles that were coming around. You can see those, but again, if they go submerged later, you can set and mark your waypoints. Again, this is where you take what you can see and what you can't see under the water, and you can intermingle those two by saving your points and giving, it, we're giving yourself the best chance to go back and find it later. Again, quick and efficient. So there's our first three tips that are gonna get us from the ramp out to where we're gonna start doing our more thorough investigation. We found our structure, we've marked some waypoints, now we wanna go back and take a look and see what those guys are holding. 
We're gonna do that with tip number four, which is investigating the structure using LiveScope. We're gonna be doing it in forward view right now. We're gonna go take a look at some of these brush piles we've marked, and we're gonna see what they're holding in there. Now, you're not always gonna see the fish on the LiveScope. They can be tucked in really nice and tight to a branch. So I'm not saying it's not worth taking a cast. It's always worth taking a cast. But if you investigate and you're not finding anything, it's a good indicator that one or two casts and you're ready to move on and check the next spot. So like I said, let's move on to tip number four. And let's investigate those brush piles. All right, guys, so here we are up on the bow and it's definitely not a week later on a much nicer day. I know you might be thinking that, but that's probably not the case, probably. Anyway, let's go check out some of these brush piles with the live scope. All right, like we talked about earlier, we came through, we found our brush piles, we found some structure, we set some waypoints. Now we're gonna move in and see what we can see and see if these guys are holding anything. There's something showing up there. All right guys, so when you're investigating the spots with a live scope, you don't just have to do this on brush piles. You can use it to check shorelines, you can use it to check rock piles, you can use it to check around docks. The possibilities are endless. You know, if you guys have called in and talked to us, or if you haven't, if you're new, you'll hear us talk about live scope all the time and describe it as a flashlight. It is something that you can look under, you can look around, and you can see things that you can't normally see being on top of the water. It's an investigative tool, 100%. Again, in a bass context, it's an investigative tool. You can see how much time you're gonna spend. You know, if you're in the summertime and you're flipping docks and things like that, you can check around docks. You can cruise down a line of docks and hold the live scope off to the side, just kind of, you know, idle by kick your live scope over at a 90 degree angle and you can scan as you go. Just go really, really slow. The slower you go, the better return you're gonna get on live scope. All right guys, so there's tip number four. There's how we're gonna investigate brush piles and other structures with the live scope to see what it's holding, to see how much time we should spend on it, keeping our efficiency level high. Now let's move on to tip number five. Now tip number five is how you anchor with your trolling motor on the spots that you want to hang out and spend more time fishing and really pick those things apart. The things you need to consider with your anchor lock on your trolling motor, you have to consider your current, you have to consider your wind, and if you're doing brush piles, you need to kind of consider the way the pile is laying and how you can approach with your boat to make sure you're not setting yourself up for tons of snags, but you still are working through the brush pile. You're setting up with the current and the wind or, or the wind in your face. The fish are gonna hang out facing up current. They're gonna wait for things to come down to them. That's how you wanna present your baits when you're running across those. So when you're moving into a structure, make sure you have it where the wind is in your face when you're nosing up to it. Then when you hit spot lock, the tail of your boat is gonna stay behind you, you're gonna hold still, and you're gonna be able to fish into it. All right guys, so there we go. There's RMP's Garmin five tips to find more fish moving from the ramp to the hook set. Now these are obviously their basic tips. It's ways to set up your electronics to be more efficient and get from spot to spot faster and get to the fish faster. You're gonna be able to delve into each one of these tips and set your units up with more precise settings to really dial them in for different water conditions, days, you name it. We've been out here, like I said, maybe more than one day, maybe not, but the water conditions and the weather conditions have changed, so we want to be able to dye our electronics for situations just like that. When you think about how you're going to go to the lake and how you're going to run through this, really think about those steps. When you're starting at the ramp, can I have my map set up already? Can I be ready to go on the water and get where I need to be before I even drop the boat in? These are gonna save you valuable minutes when you get out on the water. Whether you're in a tournament, you need it. Or you're a guy like us that work most of the time and you don't have that much time to get out and fish. You wanna get out there and make the best of it and get most of your time with your line in the water instead of push, pushing buttons on these things. You wanna have it ready to go. So if you've hung out till the end here, we talked about this, we're gonna come with tip six. We've got a bonus tip, another live scope tip 
but we're going to show you something that's wonderful, especially in the fall. We're going to switch our live to scope to perspective mode, and we're going to go across some of these flats, and we're going to look for balls of bait fish. Now, Justin fished a tournament at a nice second place finish, and he spent his entire time looking for schooling shad. That's how he was able to get that finish. If he didn't find schooling shad on perspective mode, he moved on. This is something that, again, when the fish are really keying on that, you can concentrate on it, you can use your perspective mode. Again, we've talked about this, about 15 feet or so of water, and you can run through there and find those bait balls with that wide spotlight view of the perspective mode instead of that narrow 20 degree flashlight beam of the standard live scope. All right, guys, thanks for hanging in there. I hope you followed all the way through tip six on the five tips with six, the bonus. Everybody loves a bonus. We really hope you guys find this helpful. We hope it helps you spend more time with your line in the water. If you guys like the video, if you like this style, this is something new for us. Let us know in the comments, see what you think. Make sure you like and subscribe to check us out in the future. And as always, if you guys have any questions on anything electronics related, give us a call at 316-313-4113 or shoot us an email at sales at russellmarineproducts.com. We'll see you guys next time.